Thank you, Keep It Clean. Very, very special guest in the building. Got my guy Noah from For The Flock in here to help us figure out a couple of different ways for if the Baltimore Ravens make these things happen, then they're destined for greatness and they're destined to be Super Bowl champions by the end of this year. Before we get into it, though, Noah, For The Flock, um, I truly do believe this, and I, I have said it before in previous videos. I, I really believe that you are the best uh, Ravens content creator doing it uh, and and there's a lot of them and it ain't no don't no disrespect to nobody of no course way, it's all love for everybody yeah you already I know appreciate that though but you for sure are the best Re the reason i say that is because you talk about the latest news going on which we all appreciate you talk about any rumors that are go going on which we all appreciate too uh but you also you do film study so you are like a, a, an an all in one uh when it comes to a Ravens content creator. So you provide literally everything that there is to provide for fans. The videos of Chris, the videos are super clean. The videos are nice and edited. So you keep on doing your thing because I love it, but we we all love it. So, and I appreciate you coming on. I appreciate that, man. Uh, I learned from the, I learned from you, man. You've been doing this forever now. And I've been always, I've been watching your videos since you started. Uh, always loved what you were doing. You inspired me to start something like this. So, uh, I don't think I'm the best. I don't think I, there's a, so many things I can get better at. I think, man, you, you've you been doing this for a long time, and uh, I really appreciate you for having me on. Oh, for sure, man, of course. And real quick, they already know, but you could let everybody know if it's just somebody who may possibly not know where to find you at, where they can find you. So um, on YouTube is my main platform. I also have a Twitter, but if you just search uh, for the flock, um, you should be able to find me on there. We try to, you know, do daily content um, all throughout the year, really. But um, kind of our go-to series that we like to do is called Ravens Reports, where we just talk about the top five storylines coming out of the Ravens that day, that week, or whatever, just to try to keep you up to date on all your Ravens news. Uh, so, yeah. Perfect. Man. And I have that link down below in the description. Now, uh, the subject at hand, these Baltimore Ravens, they sitting at nine and three right now. So everything is looking good. But. Uh, they have a few things that they could certainly improve on and some things that they can maintain and just continue to do well. But uh, me and you both, we compiled a list of three things that the Baltimore Ravens need to do in order to achieve greatness, in order to reach the Super Bowl, in order to be the best Baltimore Ravens that they can possibly be. We don't know what each other's lists have on it, uh, but we getting ready to go over it. Now, um, the, the first thing that I have uh, for the Baltimore Ravens to do to really take it to that next level connect on the deep ball. And the reason I say oh, connect on the deep like ball it. is because they like, they've been, I mean, minus this Chargers game, yikes, but they've been putting up points. They've been putting up points this year, despite the offense not clicking as much as they can possibly click. Uh, the running game mm -hmm. has been steadily improving, especially with Keith Mitchell being thrown in there uh, and the Ravens, mm -hmm. they have been scoring, but the deep ball, the element of the deep ball has been missing. And when you have that deep ball going, and they're getting closer and closer. But when you have that deep ball consistently going, that just makes life easier for your offense. And those chunk plays, they allow a, a long 11, 12, 13 play drive to be shortened to maybe like six or seven because you move the ball downfield uh, in a big chunk. So that would be my first thing. What, what would be yours? Oh, I think um, that's a really, really good point. I think the Ravens have been so close on connecting mm -hmm. some of these deep shots. And this kind of – my first point is kind of goes hand in hand with the deep ball, and that's pass protection. So oh, yes. um, we've seen <laughs> this year when Lamar Jackson has kept clean, and I, I did a little bit of research in here, and mm -hmm. I, I looked at two games, okay? So there's two games I look at where the Ravens allowed zero sacks, okay? That's uh, Cincinnati in week two. Lamar Jackson, mm -hmm. without getting sacked a single time that game, goes 72% uh, completion percentage, 237 yards, two touchdowns, zero interceptions, 112 passer rating, mm -hmm. and then he was nine for 14 on third down conversions. Oh. That's the big – especially whenever it comes to, you know, postseason, man, you can stay on the field on third down. Um mm -hmm. You don't take sacks, like, you're probably going to win in the playoffs. Um, and then the other game – that really stood out to me was the Detroit Lions game. Oh. Uh, this was, a, if you're a Ravens <laughs> fan, man, this this game was fun to watch. This game mm -hmm. was really fun to watch. Uh, so Lamar Jackson in this game also took zero sacks. Check mm -hmm. out the stats here. 77% completion percentage. 
Okay. Uh, 21 of 27 for 357 yards, mm. three touchdowns, zero mm. interceptions, 155 passer rating. We're talking about elite, elite, yeah. you know, almost perfect <laughs> passing numbers here. And mm. um, so those are the two games where Lamar Jackson wasn't sacked at all. And that's what it looks like. You're talking about in those two games combined, you know, five touchdowns, uh, zero interceptions, a really high passer rating, high completion percentage. And that's what happens when Lamar Jackson has time. Ronnie Stanley, yeah. Morgan Moses, and uh, Simpson on the offensive line have all missed games throughout the season. I believe Linderbaum missed one as well. Yeah, um, he did. But the offensive line hasn't had, you know, their five guys there uh, consistently throughout the year. So it feels like there's one mm -hmm. or two guys missing um, the tackles. You know, this, this pains me to say, but we talked about it recently. Like Ronnie Stanley's just mm. not playing good football right now. And I hate yeah. to say that because yeah. like Ronnie's my guy, man. I love Ronnie. I love mm -hmm. his work ethic, his his personality, like how how much he's battled through, like all that adversity on these injuries where he just gets rolled up on. Like mm. so um, but he's got to play better, and I think he will. I think this bye week will help a lot. But if the Ravens can get back to some of those games where they're giving up. Zero sacks, maybe one or two. It's not going to happen here and there. It just happens sometimes. Right. But if they give Lamar Jackson time, mm -hmm. I mean, that that downfield passing attack is going to click, um, like you're talking about. And um, the Ravens' offense is going to be really hard to stop in the playoffs. Mm. Yeah, that is such a good point about pass protection because, yeah, I mean, you you brought up the exact numbers from when Lamar has had really, really great pass pass protection, and it just – it makes such a big difference, such a big difference. Now, uh, for my second thing, I'm going to flip it to the opposite side of the ball, and that is going to be with the defense. And mm -hmm. with this defense, I mean, especially in this last game, like kudos to them because they held it down for pretty much the entire game. And we've been able to say that about this defense for a lot of times throughout this season. So mm -hmm. what the Baltimore Ravens would need to do, in my opinion, in order to be a Super Bowl team, be a true Super Bowl contender, obviously through the rest of these five games, but also in the playoffs as well, defense just has to maintain. I, I think it would be unfair of me, or even like spoiled of me to ask them, hey, defense, get even better because yeah. they've been playing great. I mean, I, would, yeah, I wouldn't mind if they did, but th th this defense, I, I think that if they can maintain what they've been doing and see, you know what? One of the most dangerous parts about this defense is, and, and it really got highlighted for me, I mean, throughout the year, but throughout uh, this past game against the Chargers and a game that you just mentioned uh, against the Bengals. Because in both of those games, and there were some other ones as well, they did not have Marlon Humphrey. And yep. with them not having Marlon Humphrey in the two games that we just mentioned, that worried me. Um, cause I know Justin Herbert likes to throw that ball all over the field. Yeah. Uh, and, and Joe Burrow, I mean, he had Jamar and then Joe, while Joe Burrow was hurt, he still had Jamar Chase. He had T Higgins. He That's still right. had his weapons. So I was thinking, Oh, boy. <laughs> oh no Marlon Humphrey. Yikes. But the Ravens, they I'm a little bit concerned too, brother. Yeah. They, they shut all that down and the defense still excelled and still made it happen. This defense throughout this year, uh, they've had these different time periods where they've been missing, this guy, I mean, they still haven't got Bowser back. The job was done for the year. They had Adafi away. He missed like four games. Marlon Humphrey, he had been out for a while. Marcus Williams missed time. And even when Marcus Williams got back, right. he has still been hurting. So th th they've been different guys that have been hurt and that have missed time. But the defense has still been consistent. They've still been holding it down. Um, so if this defense can just maintain what they've been doing, just continue doing what they've been doing, they Super Bowl champs to me. I love it, man. I love it too because it seems like we're we're thinking about the same things here because my second point, like you said, we didn't talk about this before mm -hmm. we started, but uh, my second key is to continue to limit the downfield big yeah. plays. The <laughs> That's a big part of the defense that you're talking about. Yeah. Um, so this this season, man, we've done such an excellent job mm -hmm. with explosive plays. Uh, like when's the last game you can remember – where the Ravens were just getting hmm. shredded downfield. Like, I, I I think of a player here or there. Like, I remember when we went against Pittsburgh um, early on in the year, Marlon got beat. Oh, and, yeah. Uh, in in his first game back. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But, like, and then yeah, there was a DK Metcalf play, too. But that was, yeah. That was it. So, like, maybe a handful of big plays. Right. Like, the Ravens are not giving this up. Like, in the years past, 
You know, you can remember <laughs> the Miami game. <laughs> uh, you can remember some some years past. Oh, boy. You couldn't say that. Where You know, like uh, a lot of times the Ravens would stuff all the small stuff, man. They would call mm-hmm. up the running lanes. And then all of a sudden, boom, you're getting hit with a 60-yard touchdown downfield. But mm-hmm. this year, man, they're complete. And I'd rather, you know, see them get, you know, give up some runs here and there, you know, a five, 10-yard run than – to see them give up a 50 yard touchdown over their heads. Like, Mm. so the Ravens are doing a really good job of that. And um, yeah, I think if they can continue to limit, you know, the explosive gains in the passing attack, Mm -hmm. they can, they have a real shot at at making a run at this thing because um, you know, look at the teams in the AFC that you're going to have to get through. Okay. So uh, the dolphins, they Mm -hmm. have a downfield passing attack, the chiefs, we know what, Patrick Mahomes can do, mm-hmm. you know, slinging the ball downfield, no matter who's catching passes from them. Right. Um, you think about the Bills, if they make the postseason, um, you know, the mm-hmm. Jags with Trevor Lawrence and Calvin Ridley, like these guys are going to want to throw the ball downfield. Mm-hmm. If you can make them stay patient, like the Ravens have been doing, and you can make them slowly march downfield, limit them to field goals, like the Ravens are going to be a really tough out in the postseason. Mm. Yeah, that, that's a really good point. And, and that is – something that the Baltimore Ravens have been doing a phenomenal job of just not giving up those big plays. Uh, I, I do like how you mentioned, yeah, we, it's hard to remember how often or how little the Ravens have given up big plays. It's hard to remember what those big plays are. Uh, Cause yeah, previous years, we, we could, we, it's hard to remember how much they gave up because they had given up so much over time, but it's, it's nice that the defense is doing what they've been doing now. Mm-hmm. My last thing, I, I got to put a little asterisk next to it because it's almost like it's it's, it's a gimme. So I'm, I'm, I'm going to throw a bonus in there. My, my, my last thing was going to be health, just maintaining right. the health, the, the health of Lamar Jackson, the health of just really the overall team. Because while the Baltimore Ravens, they, they have still gone through and faced and dealt with the injury bug this year, um, mm-hmm. they've been – a lot more on the better side of it than they had been in years past. They still have some guys that have been lost for the season. J.K. Dobbins gone for the season. Mm-hmm. Or Darius Washington, Mark Andrews most likely done for the season. We'll see. Um, and and there's some more. Uh, but the Ravens, for the most part, they've been on the right side when it's coming to injuries. But I, I feel like health is just that's such an easy answer and such an obvious answer. But it still is a true answer. Uh, so I'm gonna throw in one more. Um, and I'm going to say finishing, closing out the games, um, finishing what they started, because so many times throughout this season and obviously enough times this season to be nine and three. So that's great. Um, but they they started off good. They started off hot, but they just they let up, especially in those fourth quarters. Um, it's going to be very important, especially more so for the offense too, to just close stuff out because the defense normally They've been holding it down, and usually the offense has had a little bit of trouble closing it out. Now, I'm going to ask you, um, because against the Chargers, offense was lackluster throughout most of the game, uh, and the defense was amazing through most of the game. But then at the very end, Ravens had the three-point lead, and all they needed to do was get a first down. And Zay Flowers said, oh, I'm going to get the first down, but you know what? I'm going to get a little extra, too. And he took it all the way for a touchdown. Now, me, I I loved it. I I I loved it. I'm like, hey score like bill belichick said it's four quarters and you don't stop scoring till the clock hits zero how did you feel about that particular play with zay flower scoring do you think he should have went down no like i was fired up to see him get the touchdown um uh you know i think i wanted to see him get in the end zone more this you know this season so whenever i saw it happen and he had a two touchdown game i wasn't thinking about oh he should have got down like to me at that point the game was iced. Like they would have had to have scored twice. They would have had to have had of a, a su- successful onside kick. Like what was there a minute, a minute and a half left or yeah, something? Like a minute. Like, mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I thought it just really deflated their stadium and just mm. drove a dagger. That's a right good point. Into their right into their team, man. I think they just felt defeated after that. I think mm. at that point the Ravens had won the game. I understand analytically, like yeah, there's still a chance that they could come back. But to me, it just took the air out of the stadium. Mm. And um, I was fired up <laughs> to see the rookie get a second touchdown. Yeah, I, I agree. And I guess it was like a makeup for the previous week, because if you remember, uh, they had the, the the screenplay for Zay Flowers 
where in the yeah. Thursday night football game against the Bengals, where he scored a touchdown and Odell threw a clean block, but the refs decided to call holding. A, yeah, it's just like really, man. And they took away his touchdown. So his fingers happened to like barely grasp the jersey, and they I don't know, man. That that call was bogus, but yeah, yeah. But he 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 made up for it this week, so he ended up getting his touchdown. So those those will be my three things. Um, the third being just Ravens really closing out games and like you said, putting the dagger in teams uh, and just officially ending it. What would be your third? My third. So this goes right on point with finishing games. <laughs> oh, um, Lamar Jackson's legs, um, his dynamic, insane rushing ability. How many times have we seen where the Ravens are trying to, they're in a two minute, um, you know, trying to, or a four minute offense, trying to run out the game and, mm -hmm. you know, don't don't give the ball back to the other team. You know, don't put it on your defense. Finish the mm -hmm. game. You know, finish the game with the ball in your hands. That's what Lamar Jackson says he likes to do, right? Right. So mm -hmm. <clears throat> one thing that I saw this year is that Lamar Jackson is running a lot less. And that's fine. Yeah. That's great. And I don't want him necessarily running more. But when it comes to the postseason, I think there's going to be some times where Lamar Jackson, his legs could just – we're talking about getting to a Super Bowl, right? Mm -hmm. You know, I think that – his legs could just completely take the air out of a stadium whenever mm. it's, you know, how many times have we seen where the Ravens are on third down, they're trying to finish out a game. And in previous years, Lamar Jackson drops back and he sees an open rushing lane and he picks up 15, 20, 30 yards, you know, just mm -hmm. easily with his legs, with his athleticism. So I was looking at some stats and um, you know, this season, Lamar Jackson only has one game of over a hundred rushing yards. Um, and that was against Indianapolis. He had 14 carries for 101 uh, yards and two rushing touchdowns. Oh, yeah. Um, mm -hmm. And then on the season, he only has three games over 60 yards rushing. So mm -hmm. in previous years, man, you remember with Greg Roman, like <laughs> 60 yards rushing was the minimum. That was like the four. Like you could bet <laughs> that he was going to have 60 rushing yards. Yeah. <clears throat> three times. Um, out mm -hmm. of the, what, 13 games we've had this year. So um, I think if Lamar Jackson, I don't know if they're saving some stuff for the postseason. I think they are. You know, and I, yeah, I think they might be. But, you know, we're talking about people say they're scared of injury and stuff. Like both times Lamar Jackson has had serious injuries. It's been not in space, not as a rusher. It's been with him dropping back as a passer. We know that. Mm -hmm. right? So when Lamar Jackson is out <clears> the <throat> field, he, and I've said this for years, you know, to all the haters who say, oh, he can't, this won't last, this won't last. Lamar Jackson is so, so talented, so good at just making that little wiggle that he's so uh, slippery to where he doesn't take a lot of big shots. It mm -hmm. just kind of shifts out of a big hit and he gets down, right? So I think the Ravens, if they want to get to a Super Bowl championship, they can do it with Lamar Jackson's arm. Mm -hmm. I think it'll make it that much more potent you know, if we could just unleash him as a rusher, just maybe a couple times a game, maybe to ice a game late in the fourth quarter, mm -hmm. he just, you know, rips off a big run and we see Lamar Jackson do, you know, only what he can do. Oh, yeah, for sure. Yeah, it's, it's definitely the ability is there. And, yeah, we have been noticing this year that he has been holding it back. And that's why I appreciated him even acknowledging it in the interview that he had uh, last week with Devin McCourty. Um, when Devin McCourty asked him, like, hey, who – who will win in a race between you, Zay Flowers, Keith Mitchell, and Lamar talked about how that, yeah, both of them are fast, but he's, he said, hold on, he's, he still got it now, but he just he said he, he's been holding back. Yeah, <laughs> mm -hmm. so um, it's it's there, but I think um, I think Lamar Jackson and, and the Ravens, they've just been playing the, the long game uh, when it comes to mm -hmm. him running, him taking off, and they just really working on uh, self-preservation. Well, him working on self-preservation and something even that that stood out to me this year that's been different from other years that I think has really helped Lamar Jackson in his offense out too. just take alleviate a lot of pressure off of Lamar Jackson has been some very small but significant has been a check dance uh, because yeah. before yeah, previous years. Yeah, Lamar, it, it would be deep ball or nothing. Um, but now this year, they've been getting the backs involved a whole lot more uh, than in previous years past. So, And it's been other little things here and there, too. But it just really seems like the Ravens and, and Lamar Jackson, they 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 holding them back. They're like, all right, let's just chill. Let's get through the regular yeah. season first. 
And then, hey, postseason, let it all out. So I, I, I'm looking forward to seeing exactly how uh, they perform come playoff time. Got to still get there first and got to get through the rest of the regular season first. And they got some yeah. tough, tough game, a tough stretch. Um, but they, you know, you Baltimore Raven, man. As long as Lamar's suiting up, man, they, they really got a shot against anybody yeah. in the world. I was looking at some of the teams they have remaining on their schedule, right? The mm -hmm. Jaguars, the 49ers. They got some tough matchups, right? But mm -hmm. I was looking at around the league, like the Ravens are the only team this year that I can think of that hasn't been blown out. Like even the games that they've lost. Yeah, one score right there to the end. Like mm -hmm. the, the oh, Chiefs, yeah. I'm pretty sure, got whooped. Um, the Jags got blown out. The yeah, the Jags got did. blown out. They got mm -hmm. beat bad by the Browns. Like the Ravens are one of the only teams that are, you know, besides maybe the Eagles, but, you know, <laughs> yeah. in every single one of their games. And yeah. I think they're a really good team. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if they run the remaining schedule coming off mm. the bye. Um, you know, I, I see past the victory against the Niners. Um, I don't think the Niners have really played a defense like the Ravens yet. Um, mm. And I, I think – they can beat the Jaguars. I think the Jaguars are pretty vulnerable in some places, especially their offensive line could have some issues against the Ravens. But, um, you know, if the Ravens only drop another game, I wouldn't be surprised. Or if they, they run the remaining schedule, I think they're a really good football team. Still going to be hard to get the one seed, though, because the Chiefs, they have a pretty easy schedule. And even if both teams went out right now, yeah, like, the Chiefs got the Ravens it. went out. Yeah, mm -hmm. the Chiefs went out. They, they got it. So yeah. they would need to win out and the Chiefs to at least drop one. All right, so ho hopefully they do. So I, I know I'm gonna be whoever the Chiefs going up against every week. Uh, I'm rooting heavy for that team, hoping that they uh Chiefs keep dropping because I, I want to see the Ravens get that that number one seed. I want to see them be at the top. Now I know, and I pose this question to to Team Keep It Clean a lot um recently because 2019, obviously 14 and two, wonderful season with wonderful regular season. Ravens got the number one seed. Uh, and they got it by far. Like Lamar was sitting so many in fourth quarters and whatnot. But Ravens got the number one seed, got to play their playoff, got to have a bye week and play their playoff game at the crib at MT Bank Stadium. Then they got punched in the mouth. They got whooped by the Titans and all that. Yeah. For you, does if the Ravens were to get a number one seed, do you feel like, all right, I don't want them to get a number one seed. I, I, I would rather them just make it as a wild card or something. Um, would you rather that? Or, or would you rather a, a top seed? Do you, do you have sort of a, a, a fear of flashback for the Baltimore Ravens? Like maybe if they get the number one seed, then they may overlook the team that they're going up against. Or are you like not even on 2019? You would whatever. Man, I've been thinking about this a lot. Um, <laughs> truly, I've been thinking about if I'd rather have the number one seed or the number two seed. Mm -hmm. And I keep going back and forth. But um, I look at, you know, I'm a big Orioles fan. Okay. Big baseball okay. guy. And I love mm -hmm. the Orioles. They had the first round by this year and um, they got whooped by the Rangers. <laughs> like they, the Rangers went in, they just played, they got hot. And so you got to think about it. If you're the number one seed, whatever team you played in the divisional round is coming off a win feeling confident. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like they just built some more momentum and they just said, Hey, we won in the playoffs and we know we can do it again. So that's one aspect to think about is teams do get momentum and you had a, a week off. Mm -hmm. um, I never thought about it like that. That's a good rusty. point. Okay. So, so yes, it's a shorter path, you know, but I also love the Ravens, something about John Harbaugh and Lamar Jackson's demeanor. They, they thrive as underdogs. Like I've seen so many times where the, where the Ravens were not favored and then they just smoke a team. So I would not mind to see the Ravens, as the number two seed, you know, punch a team in the mouth in the wild card round and then go and then, you know, pick up some momentum, some confidence. Like, hey, we just, yeah. You know, because if think about it, if they're the number two seed, they're playing the number <coughs> seven seed. So they're going to be playing maybe the Steelers, the Texans, maybe the, I don't know, one, one of the lower tier AFC teams. They're still good teams. Mm -hmm. the, yeah. the Ravens can, sh should nine, that ten, nine times out of 10 beat. Mm -hmm. So, I look at – I think the Ravens could go into Kansas City even as a, a number two seed if they play mm. in the AFC Championship. That would um, be something. underdogs on the road, and I think the mm. Ravens could win. So mm. um, I, I go back and forth. I want the Ravens to have the one seed, but then I'm like, ah, oh, you know, I kind of want them to have the two seeds so they can build momentum. Mm -hmm. So um, 
it's a uh, either way it'll be fun to watch yeah i appreciate that viewpoint on it because i never thought about it like that because for me i'm like hey yeah get that number one c get the buy and you just got to be extra prepared for when you're coming off of the buy and i mean usually but i mean regular season is obviously different from the postseason but john harbaugh coming off the buy he does really good uh and we'll get we'll get to see that uh against the rams uh coming up next week but um, yeah. I'm like the way that I feel like I feel like Ravens, they just need to do a better job of embracing being a top team. Like you mentioned, they are they do thrive as underdogs, but they if they're going to be one of the best teams in the league, people will have no choice but not to sleep on them. So they'll they'll have to know who the Baltimore Ravens are. So I feel like they really need to embrace that role of I right, know we, we all like that, but still remain humble and, and still take care mm -hmm. of business. But know that you can get that mm -hmm. job done Absolutely. so and one more thing i'll say oh yeah I'm sorry no you're good talked about 2019 right mm -hmm. the, the the key difference between you know looking at that season i remember the ravens basically had like two buys because oh, you remember yeah. they were 14 and two and mm -hmm. they rested their starter a lot of their starters against the steelers last game week. right and it was like a, a lot of those guys rested and then they had another week of rest and then mm. they got the tight. so it's like almost mm. two buys yeah a lot of time off and also i think the this team is a better team than 2019 Ravens they are more complete I think their defense is much better suited to stop the pass like their secondary is playing so well right now um mm. they're deep in the secondary they get after the quarterback and then they're more complete as a offense like they can beat you in the air they can beat you on the ground they still mm. have the number one rushing offense in the National Football League but they're 20th in passing they were mm. sitting around 16th early in the season they had a couple of down games but um a lot of times the Ravens have been up big and they're running the ball to try to, you know, milk the clock and they haven't had to throw the ball a lot. So uh, I think this is a much more complete team than 2019. Um, so it'll be very fun to see how the season ends. Yeah, that's a good point, um, especially when it comes to the defense about it being a more complete team and, and even a possible better team. I, I think uh, with 2019, since their offense was just going absolutely crazy pretty much every week, uh, they would get out to these big leads and that would make it, they that would make other teams one dimensional. So that would make it easier yeah. for the defense. Like, all right, pass rushers, go get after them, cornerbacks drop back, catch some picks, interception, whatever, and do your thing. Yeah. But now this year, the offense, it hasn't always been clicking. Uh, so the defense has had to do more work, but they've been doing that work. So, I think this is a, a definitely much better defense than the one in 2019. Uh, for the offense, as far as players, uh, as far as personnel, they are in better position for sure. And like you mentioned, yeah. they got they got more than one way to get it. Um, but it, now it's just about them clicking. Uh, it's about them yeah. really getting things rolling and whatnot. And, and hopefully they do that. And hopefully they roll it all the way to not, not, not even to the Super Bowl, but through the Super Bowl, because mm -hmm. we don't want to get there and then fall short we want to get yeah, there oh that would be a beautiful thing so hopefully it ends up happening we'll see how the rest of the season goes but noah my guy from for the flock uh appreciate you coming on appreciate you uh chopping it up with us one more time before we get out of here let everybody know where they can find you Yep, on YouTube for the flock. You can also find me on Twitter. Uh, really appreciate you and Graven for having me for on. Sure. Love what you've been doing for years. Love the positivity from your channel. Um, love the fact that you welcomed me in, you know, as a YouTuber coming on here a year or two ago, like you, you know, gave me a lot of love, you know, gave me shout outs. So appreciate you for that. And no, for sure, uh, keep doing what you're doing, man. Appreciate it, man. So team, keep it clean. Make sure y'all check him out. All his stuff will be down below in the description. Uh, and we going, man. We out.